let's talk about your endorsements, your signature models, and like the processes and the, the concepts of how they came about. Sure. Um, so going back in time, I, I would say my oldest signature model is my ride symbol with Meinl. Um, it's, I think it's like eight years old now, which wow. is crazy because I'm still using it. And my sound has evolved so much in those eight years and my style has evolved so much. And it's just surprising that I still use that symbol. I mean, there's no part of my contract that says I have to. Um, I could I could easily call them and just say like, I'm not into this anymore. And that's it. You know, let's make a new one. Hmm. But um, yeah, basically a lot of uh, all of the products that I have, they were, they were never intended to be signature products. It was just a moment where I couldn't find what I wanted in the current lineup, whether it be with Meinl, Gretsch or Vic Firth. And then they just said, well, let's try to make you something that you're happy with. So with the symbol, um, it started with, they have a symbol called the 20 inch extra dry ride. Um, and that's, that was kind of like the ride that got me into Meinl. Chris Coleman was playing it when he moved to Meinl. Benny Greb was playing it before he had a signature symbol. Yost Nickel was playing it. Felix Lehrman. So all these guys that I was looking up to played this symbol. And then, so I got it when I became a Meinl artist and I really did love it. But I just wanted it to be a little more crashy. And I kept asking them, send me a thinner one, send me a thinner one. And eventually they just said, why don't we try to make you something? Because this symbol that you're playing, it does exactly what it's designed to do. And you want it to do something it was not designed to do. So, yeah. I mean, that's I think all you can ever hope for from your company is companies is for them to be like, well, let's do what it takes to make you happy. Um, and then you just have to find that balance of like, OK, well, I don't. I don't want you to invest a ton of money just so I'm happy with one symbol. So that's usually when a signature product emerges, especially if the person that they're doing all this work for has enough influence that they think, you know, it could be warranted. And the transition ride with Meinl, it's a 21 inch extra dry symbol, but unlike the extra dry ride, it has lathing on the bottom, which gives it the washiness so you can crash on it. Um, and for years and years and years, it was Meinl's top selling ride symbol. Um, and it's still wow. one of their best selling signature products. And so what it says is, and, and, and my, my signature is on the bottom. We never, ever call it the Mike Johnston symbol. It's always called the transition ride. I don't, you know, and so it's like, well, I'm not selling that symbol. That symbol was missing in the lineup and there's enough people that want that sound. Same thing with my snare drum with Gretsch. Um, they noticed that I was playing a lot of ANF snares and they were like, um, mm, Mr. Johnston, <laughs> what is going on? And I'm like, dude, these things sound amazing. And they're like, that's great. But as a Gretsch artist, we'd love for you to play one of our snares. And I'm like, I know, but I, I don't know what to say. There, there isn't a snare that I truly, truly just think is like my sound. It's not that the snares weren't great quality. They're amazing. And they're Gretsch, but it was like, you know, what makes Gretsch drums so incredible? I actually don't like it in a snare. What makes them incredible is their warmth um, and just almost their vintage vibe. But I like a very snappy snare drum. So those rounded bearing edges kind of steal that away from the drum. Yeah. So long story short, um, they said the same thing as mine. I'm like, well, what would it, what could we do to make this right? And so it's like, we started prototyping and we started going through different shell types and then they let me do a double 45 degree bearing edge on a Brooklyn shell, which is something they just don't do. Um, the only double 45 degree bearing edge in the entire Gretsch history of drums is Vinnie Caliuta's signature snare. Ah. And so like it, like I said, it's very anti Gretsch. They want rounded bearing edges. They want warmth. Um, they want that vintage tone. And so it's like, but I wanted a, a modern sounding snappy snare. So that's kind of how that worked out. We went through about 10 different prototypes, found the one, and then it just became, you know, um, it's a, it's a great selling drum for them. And once again, name is on the inside of the shell, not the outside. And it's just called the Gretsch Brooklyn standard. Um, I think it's really important. Anytime you have a signature product to try your best to keep your name out of it, because if your name is part of the product, then someone needs to be a fan of yours to get it you know um so you let's say, you know what i mean so because mm -hmm. i purposely didn't play the dave weckle sticks when i was a teenager because i wanted to be the next dave weckle so i don't want to give in to like the dave weckle sticks although i loved those sticks i was like oh man well i'll just take my mom's nail polish remover and get rid of his name so it's like and then so so that was kind of the thought and 
like keep my name on the bottom or the inside. Uh, the sticks with Vic Firth, you know, they're not the Mike Johnson sticks. They're the N E one, no excuses one. Um, and the one, it, well, they're the no excuses stick, but the one was attached because we were thinking anyone c- can play them because yeah. they're meant for the average drummer. Uh, so by the way, average, not in talent, average in like build, <laughs> I'm an average size human being. I have normal hands. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where that came from, but same thing. It was just like, look, I don't want my name on these. Um, let's just give it a model number. And you know, with social media now, you don't need the credit. Like everyone will know you were behind it. You don't yeah. have to slap your name on everything. So yeah, so that's how that all worked out. And then, you know, the other, endorsements i have um aya matcha that's my only non-drumming endorsement and i just love my connection with them because i i don't need free tea although it's great i need information this is the first time i've ever recommended something that people put in their body i need to know that like okay well do you guys do radiation tests on the soil like I've never recommended something that went in people's bodies before. I don't have to worry about what's in the ride symbol. It's a ride symbol. Hit the damn thing. You're not going to eat it. Yeah. But so with Aya, it's just such a great connection because they have constant calls with me, giving me information about the history of matcha, what's going on in their tea fields in Japan, what makes, you know, this specific cultivar of tea different than, you know, two blocks over and all of this stuff. So that's a beautiful relationship. And then 64 audio for in-ears. Um, really just got to experience how great those were on the flight over to the UK. Like that was my first time having in-ears in from the plane taking off until it landed while, you know, it was like a 10 hour flight and my ears never got sore. So that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed being like, oh, cool. I'm with the right company. Um, And then Aquarian Drumheads. Um, Aquarian Drumheads has been there. They signed me when I was 20 years old. And I'm 45, so it's been 25 years uh, with that company, and I I just absolutely love them. 